What's up guys, Malcolm Moore here, and welcome to this, my review of the Bakery Snowboards Benatar One. This is their flagship all-mountain snowboard. I've been riding it all season, all conditions, everything from slush to powder, steeps, mellow, a little bit of park, carving, and now I want to give you my thoughts on this board. Now, I could normally bosh out a review a lot quicker than this, but as you can see, those lifts, they're still not running. They haven't been running all season in France, so I've had to hike up every single run. I know you guys in Whistler, you've just been shut down as well. It sucks. Anyway, let me stop playing my tiny little violin and let's get on with the review. So, like I said, this is an all-mountain board. And first I want to talk you through the camber profile. It's got a bit of a rocker in the nose, camber underfoot, and then the tail, it kind of flattens itself out at the bottom there. A little bit of flat base right in the tail. What that's going to do, the rocker is going to give you that extra float in the powder. The camber is going to give you that predictability. It's going to give you good edge grip and it's going to pop you nicely out of turns. But what's quite unique about this board was the short section of flat base in the tail, which on the website they say it makes the board a little bit more forgiving. But what I actually found it did is make it really kind of stable when you're really kind of pushing through the latter part of the turn, you know, because that's when you're using your back foot anyway. It really helped to engage the back part of the board in a really predictable fashion. So that's something I really liked about it. Now the board is what most brands would call mid-wide. It's slightly wider than normal for its length. And that's something I always look for in a board just because I've got slightly bigger feet and you definitely don't want your toes hanging over the front when you're carving or when you're riding steep. They're just gonna dig in the snow if they do. So if you've got small feet, that's not gonna be an issue for you, but if you've got big feet, it's definitely something worth looking for. And the added bonus is that it gives, is that it gives you more surface area on the bottom of the board that again, is gonna give you more float in the powder. Now, it's obviously got a bit of a directional flex and a directional pattern going onto it with the rocker camber then the flat base but the shape itself is pretty much a twin the nose is slightly larger but barely noticeable and that means that when you're riding the pieces you're not going to notice when you're riding this switch it's going to feel pretty much the same and again with landings off jumps or taking off on jumps totally happy to ride this switch obviously it's not going to be as good as a true twin but when you're riding it in your normal direction, it is gonna feel that much better. This is my preferred style of board, this kind of directional all-mountain twin. You can still ride them switch, but they're just gonna feel a lot better regular. Now, looking at the board, you can see it's got this quite cool matte top sheet, which I really like, and the added bonus is that when you're putting your foot on it here, it doesn't slide off. It's really easy to grip on the top of the board. So when you're coming off chairlifts or if you're riding T-bars, things like that. But the downside of it that I found, because it's quite grippy, the top of it, let me see if it does it now. I'll grab some snow. You can see snow sticks quite easily to it. It does come off when I shake it. But particularly when the snow is kind of wet and heavy. So I've had a few powder days where it snowed and then got really warm and this heavy snow just kind of stuck and gripped to the board, to the nose, to the middle and the tail. And it was actually quite a bit of work to scrape it off. And that meant that as I was going down the run, my board was getting heavier and heavier and wanting to sink a little bit more. So that was a little bit of a bummer. But the good news is that they do actually do this board in two graphics. And the other one has a gloss top sheet. So although your foot isn't gonna grip on it, the snow is just gonna slide right off. So it's just something to think about. Which brings me on to the second thing that I wasn't too keen on with this board, which is the only other thing I could think of actually, but it is just a tad on the heavy side. Not too much. And now it is obviously quite a large board. This is a 162, and as I said, it's that little bit wider, but I compared it to my old K2 Turbo Dream, which had similar specs, and this is just that little bit heavier. But it's not too much of an issue. And what that brings me on to say is, that weight is probably also to do just with the fact that this board is 
towards the kind of stiffer end of the spectrum. I think on the website they have it down as kind of mid-range, but to be honest I'd say this board is slightly kind of stiffer than that. I'd put it about a 7 out of 10. And that tells you a little bit about what this board's riding style is. Although it's an all-mountain board, and yes, it can do everything from park and jibbing to carving and free ride, it definitely focuses more at that kind of hard charging free ride end of the spectrum. This is a board that really wants to go fast and just plow through anything. Where I found it really excelled is in those crappy conditions where it's really lumpy and bumpy, a mixture of all terrain, and this board would not get bucked around. It would just kind of plow you through it. Again, that rocket nose just kind of lifts you up on top of it. The camber gives you that solid edge grip right across the end of the board. And once again, yeah, that kind of flat part in the tail just gave me that stability towards the end of the turn. So yeah, I'd definitely say this is this board's preference. If you're looking for an all-mountain board, but you think you're gonna spend less time in the park and more time trying to chase a bit of powder or just charge hard and do some hard carving, then this is definitely a board for you. Finally, coming onto the base. Ooh, probably could do with a little bit of wax now. I'm quite lazy. But this is a really nice, fast base. I never found myself getting stuck. Compared to my Salomon Dance Hall, that just eats up wax. I'm constantly having to wax it and it dries out really quickly. Whereas this, I've only actually waxed it once this season and even now you can see it's getting a little bit dry, it still holds its speed really well. Really, really nice. And of course, the bonus of having a black base, when you scratch it, when you hit those rocks, mega easy to get the P-Tex out and repair it. So, all in all, I would definitely recommend this board. Super fun, hard charging, all mountain board. Quickly before I go, a lot of you have been asking me about my binding angles. I'm on the Burton Cartels here, by the way. Pretty standard binding. I don't get too excited by bindings. They're just something you put your feet in. But I ride minus 12 and plus 18. It's what I ride pretty much all the time. And for me, it's the perfect kind of trade-off. You're still kind of duck-footed enough that you can ride switch, but your body's just turned slightly open into that really nice position that I find helps with kind of hard carving. You know, you wanna be able to get this slightly more open position when you're really pulling through your heel side turns and just having that front foot turned out slightly more is really gonna help with that. If you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. If you wanna know anything that I've missed on this board, just let me know and I will get back to you. I'll put the link for it in the description down below as well. It's not an affiliate link or anything, they're not paying for me. It just happens to be the board that I wanted to go for this season. I've spent a lot of time on these kind of volume shifted boards, boards like the Ride Warpig and the Salomon Dance Hall, which I still use and love. But I wanted to go back to something a little bit more normal, an all mountain board that can kind of do everything for me from when I'm teaching lessons, then maybe I finish and we'll go out and charge the piece. On the next day it's a powder. I don't have to change anything with this board. I keep it as it is. Oh, which does bring me on to one more final thing. If you are someone that likes to pull the bindings right back when you're riding in the deep stuff to give yourself a bigger nose, this board, you can just kind of see them here, it does have these extra holes so you can pull the whole thing back about an inch. Pretty cool. All right, I think that's me done. How'd I do? All right? Right, let's get Indy. He's gonna be gagging to get down there. Cheers for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye now.